Hi everybody, this is Bronislava. Uh, here we are again um, uh, with another video. Uh, recently I had a friend who called me up and, uh, and asked me a question about charts, how to read them, how to understand them, okay? Um, and me and my friend, or my friend and I, <laughs> correctly, uh, decided that we are going to make a video for you. It's uh, basically a conversation uh, between two of us uh, and I also created a couple of images um, so you could go and follow uh, our conversation. So it's not about knitting or crocheting. This video is about understanding charts and how to read them. Hi, Elle. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I think you. I will need you actually to be on a regular, uh, on a, you know, not on a speakerphone because it's going to be too distorted. Okay, let me get my headphone. Alrighty. There we go. Head on. Oh, that's much better. Yes. Sorry about that. No, no, it's okay. I really appreciate uh, what you're doing. So, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have Elle on the telephone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, we decided to do this uh, video recording and hopefully it will help uh, many of you as well as it will help Elle, right? Yes. Okay, so... Elle sent me an image of a pattern, but I could not use it, so I had to make my own. Yes. Yes. Okay, so now Elle has questions, and we are, uh, if, if you have the number one image. Yes, I do. Okay, so that's the one that basically is very similar, how it's designed, not the, the pattern itself, but the, the, the image. And yes. we're going to go and talk about it. So you do have a question. I do. So I'm knitting a sweater. It's in the round. And the chart that I have, just like the one that you have here, I see all of these gray boxes. And the instructions are not telling me what to do with the gray boxes. It just says, okay, go ahead and start working on the color chart. And I'm like, what is, what's the gray for? <laughs> that makes no sense. How do I get to the color? How do I start the blue color work here? Okay. Because I don't have gray in my pattern. Yes. So my, my uh, advice is to uh, basically ignore the gray, the gray ones. Those are no stitches. Not stitches. So that means when I start the very first stitch, when I'm starting the chart and I'm at my marker to start the round, I ignore stitches one through five and I just start with the blue stitch. Yes. Okay. So then I'll knit one, two, three, four, five, six, six stitches, which is six through 11. And then I would skip like I did the first set of gray boxes and skip the next four. They don't exist. Exactly. So what, what is really happening, you, you know, um, some people think that they have to slip those gray stitches, right? That was a thought I had in the beginning, and I just couldn't figure it out looking at other tutorials and reading things online. What, how do I just magically jump? I was thinking take the stitches off the needle and hang them but i'm like that would be doing cable work and this is not cable work and it, then i did think okay if i slip them but then i've got this massive float and i'm not doing floats at least not yet that's right so uh, you know uh, um this th this gray area it can be really confusing to many people and that's why i wanted to make this uh this video uh because like I said, these gray stitches, one through five, they do not exist. 
okay? And so, because they do not exist, what is what you need to do is you need to start with number six. That is going to be your number one stitch. So six is one stitch, seven is number two stitch, eight is three, nine is four, ten is uh, five, <laughs> mm -hmm. and eleven would be six. Okay, and then you would go again from six to eleven. You would work only those stitches, and totally ignore ignore the gray boxes. Okay, so that means when I'm on row two, I'm repeating the same thing. There are no grays; it's all blue. Yes, you will that's be knitting. That's right. You would be knitting only the blue boxes, and because there are no stitches in uh, row two, you would just, again, you know, you think that they're not there. They don't exist, okay? I want to show you also uh, in this picture uh, that is resembling very much the one that you sent me before, mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, uh, sometimes they really don't show you uh, uh, where to really add a stitch. So I made another picture, but uh, you know, if you go and look in, uh, at uh, row number four, that would be your uh, added stitch. An okay. Increase. Okay. Increase. That would be already increased stitch. So that means that you have to increase in row three. You see I that saw, little, you see that little, little step. Mark. So I create, go and look at number two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in a third row, that's mm -hmm. where you would go and add that extra stitch. Okay, so, so for you, row three, so you, it would be you, knit you, blue, knit blue, do the white, knit blue, knit blue, keep doing that all the way around, and then for four, would four be the, I would have to do a make one right. Okay, no, you can okay. go how you can go and do you can do a make right or you can also do where is that black dot on line three mm -hmm. what you could do also do a yarn over oh okay then you would go and because you're knitting in a in a round right so then you would yes. knit blue blue we're on a row three right yes white blue 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 then you would go back to you know repeat repeat because i don't know how many repeats you're doing so you would do another yarn over where that blue uh, where that black uh, dot is and again blue blue white blue 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 okay oh okay i see what you're doing so then when i get to row four the black dot really becomes that first blue stitch that's right and when you're in row four that black dot becomes like you said blue stitch mm -hmm. but because you do yarn over you will go and knit it through the back loop through the mm -hmm. back stitch but you know in the back of the needle mm -hmm. which is going to basically close the hole it's not going to okay. go and have a hole there okay okay and uh and then you would continue you would continue blue blue white blue white blue blue got it that would be your fifth row, you know i mean the fourth row the fifth row would be blue 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 white blue 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 yes sixth row would be all blues mm -hmm. seventh row would be blue 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 <laughs> <laughs> And then where that dot is yarn over. Okay. Okay. Now you see in eighth row, I, yeah. I did a mistake. This I, I shouldn't have another in eighth row right after the this seventh row. I shouldn't have uh, an increase there. So I probably would go and just uh, do eighth row without that blue. I would go and put the blue dot into ninth row. I think that would be much wiser idea to do it. But this is be 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 beyond you know 
uh, beside the, uh, uh, you know, we don't have to really worry about it at the moment. Okay. So, so this, you know, this you understand, but now I want yes. you to scroll to uh, number three. Yes, I have that. And let me see, I just made my uh, screen a little bit. I need to make it a little bit smaller because it's a little bit too big. So I need to do something about it. No, I don't know what I did with it. I think I made it a little bit too big, but okay. So uh, when we are on the uh, on our third row, you, I mean third picture, you see this is exactly uh, another way of doing the pattern. You know, so you don't see those you don't see those gray boxes, right? That makes more sense to me. And so if that those bo uh, boxes wouldn't be there, you would know that number six is your first uh stitch mm -hmm. you know and uh and you finish with 11 and then you're uh, again going with repeat yes repeat and then uh you know then you would know that um in um in the fourth row you could go and uh do e either you could go and do the yarn over in a third row or you could go and do your uh make one right and make right uh one left you know okay. depending on which side okay? okay so that's how it works thank you i do like it without the gray the gray was just unsettling i'm like what am i supposed to do with that but when you let me know you just ignore them they don't exist yes you just start with the actual pattern yes and then it will expand across the entire row yes and you keep repeating and repeating and it'll keep growing as you keep knitting that makes sense but definitely not having those gray boxes like you did in chart number three that helps a lot yes so i just wanted to show you that there are different ways of uh, doing these charts that people do them differently uh some just gray out the the those no stitches you know so uh and you know when there is there is no gray area it's probably makes a lot more sense to people that they would go and knit only those stitches it's a huge help because the directions do not say any of this it just says do the chart yes <laughs> yes it does not Oh. Yes, and and you and your your brand, you are very very talented. I have to, I have to tell you, you've done so well with that. I have watched what you're doing. I watch you on on Instagram, and I you know, and I see uh, stuff that you do. It's like <laughs> incredible how much you have come along in. Uh, I don't know when 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 did you start knitting? Not maybe not even a year ago, right? It feels like it was, yeah, last year. I was fiddling with knitting at first. You know it was crochet that got me, and it was your videos that taught me how to crochet because it was your snood video. Yes. I asked you how to make a snood, and that set me off. And then I started knitting and watching your videos, and definitely last year with the scarf that I had asked you about, and you made the tutorial. The scarf that slides itself through the other end and it has oh yes like yes yes yeah, yeah that's yeah. when i started really knitting like crazy so yeah i owe it all to you <laughs> oh, no, you're my no, knitting teacher no, no you you uh you have to watch lots of other videos because there is so many talented video um uh, uh, uh youtubers that go and do you know knitting and crochet just don't don't uh, settle just on me just have fun <laughs> oh i do but you are the initial knitting teacher oh. when i looked at every other honestly when i looked at every other video it was like reading latin it was like watching latin looking at latin it made no sense but your breakdown and the slow motion that i found with your videos helped and the tips and tricks especially knitting for a beginner 
I tried knitting on metal needles. Not fun. Yes. <laughs> I could not get the stitches to stay on. But you said beginners should try wood needles. And I went crazy and bought a whole bunch of wooden needles, but it worked. Yes, yes, yeah. It works. And you so, know yes. what I, I've been I have been um fairly experienced because I've been uh knitting and crocheting since I was around nine or ten. But I will tell you something, when I switch to wooden needles, I mean mm -hmm. I I prefer those now. I don't I don't use uh metal needles hardly ever. Hardly ever. Really? Yeah. I just See, use switch. Yeah, wooden needles. I still have my wood needles because that's what I started with because of you. Well, I started with the metal. Metal. Couldn't get the stitches to stay on. And I saw your video that for the beginners. And you said wood needles because the yarn grips onto the wood needle. And it did. That's what I tried. And it worked. Stuck with it. And then I was starting socks. And I'm like, I don't see wood circular needles in the size that I wanted. So I got metal. And I was like, oh, this is a lot faster. And I've stuck to metal now. Yes, the, the but, metal, yeah. once you are experienced, then the metal is uh, very good also. You see, when you're learning, uh, the stitches um, stitches may be slipping off. Yes. When you're learning. Once you're experienced, then uh, you go, uh, you know, you can go and start using those metal again because you already are, uh, you know, um, basically uh adjusted to the the you know your tension you know how mm -hmm. to hold the needles everything has to go and just click in the brain and so that's why you don't have any more problem with with uh with metal needles i don't have any problem with metal needles either but i i kind of like working with with the wood, the wood ones. but because they also the the bamboo needles they become um they become uh, smooth so as they as you work on them they become almost like a, uh they become shiny and and almost like uh, metal but it it's not metal you know mine didn't turn shiny <laughs> yeah well i bought cheap <laughs> but i you know i am on a budget so <laughs> i bought cheapies <laughs> i bought cheapies and they mine got smooth was Michaels. mine were cheap too <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Michaels, they have the ones that are shiny already, but I bought really, really, really cheap, cheap, cheap. Oh. <laughs> and they were a little rough, you know, but uh, the longer you work with them, they turn into M Michaels <laughs> shiny, you know. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you I so much. Your help. Oh, and I, you. I and I thank you so much for having conversation with me and yes. helping me to make this a video uh, and you, you you deserve some kind of a medal yourself <laughs> no you deserve all the credit because without you i would not have figured this out i would have tossed the test knit to the side honestly i was um, like all this yarn i was like what's happening where's Gronislava? i'm gonna have to bother her again i'm sorry <laughs> no i enjoy when you bother me i enjoy Thank you. i enjoy uh, talking to you my friend wonderful you too you uh, too honestly thank you okay thank you so much talk All to right, you I'll soon to you. okay bye, bye.